Yes, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? See you guys talk so well, I'm back again with another video. And hopefully everyone's kind of calmed down after the back of yesterday's uh, uh, result. And we can kind of now just look at everything with more of a clear mind and have a good discussion about everything going on at Arsenal. I got I got some people with me today and a wonderful panel, as always, on today's Arsenal panel show. So let me know what you guys are doing. And also, if you guys haven't already checked out the match reaction, please do check out the match reaction. I got first, I'm going to bring through... Uh, I've been doing a lot of work with this guy lately. Uh, big up Dan Potts, uh, doing his, has his own channel, the the Twelfth Man podcast. And you know what, bro? One of the fastest channels growing out there right now. So you're doing your thing, man. Keep doing it, bro. Uh, hope you're doing well. Big up, man. Yeah, big up, man. Thanks for having me on, bro. Hope you're well, man. I seen I seen your match reaction, so we're gonna get into it. I got <laughs> Kenny Ken also in the building. I spoke to Kenny Ken yesterday, and well, I don't know. We actually we we generally but believe that you know like i said you couldn't that you went you're tired you couldn't get out for work i don't know what made you come come on the chat but big up for coming to chat but if you seriously think that we got over it you're wrong it still okay. hurts badly fair enough uh we got gunner souls in the building and gunner souls first time i seen people coming at you with old tweets and video clips and and you didn't get it as bad as me because I'm I'm just like I, I I do too much sometimes I get ahead of myself I'm too excited I'm like a little kid sometimes in a candy store when I when I get when when Arsenal are doing well it's it's bad and then we got Dylan in the house Dylan you're lucky you didn't end up going to Bayern eh you would have been the few. first game I've missed first game is like PSV away and I can't lie that's two games I'm so glad I missed I can't lie <laughs> yeah. that that game yeah look hey. good out there though look like good fun but yeah the game Not hey anymore. it is it is what it is um today we know what happened in the champions league but let's kind of talk about the champions league and the last couple games and the results today the topic that we want to discuss to start off with of course we need to start off with the game but i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go to you dan and i'm just gonna ask you what is your initial reaction to that game arsenal being out of the champions league what did you think? Like, just quick synopsis of what you thought about the game, because of course everyone's gonna give their take on it and try to try to bring something that you haven't heard be mentioned previously uh, to the table. So yeah, Dan, you get to go first on this. What do you think about yesterday's result? Yeah, listen, man, the first half went exactly how I thought it would. I thought it was gonna be tight. I went for a one nil for the Arsenal foolishly. Um, should have gone one nil Bayern, which is what it was. Um, and I really feel like it showed tiredness in the second half um i think as well what we're seeing now is not much trust in the bench that everyone seems to think is as good as man city's um i see some stats to back that up which is quite worrying i also see some stats in april where we just capitulate and it just sounds like the same old arsenal and i'm really gutted man because now we're gonna have to go through months of questioning again which is very toxic and very tiring and very exhausting for people to start mentioning are we good enough? Is this manager good enough? Are we going in the right direction? And I kind of get bored of it, to be fair, because I actually want to be talking about something different. But the manager keeps allowing us to talk that way, man. Um, yeah, no excuses yesterday. Bayern Munich had three players out. A lot of people were getting very excited because of that. And I just felt like we run out of complete steam and I was really disappointed with us offensively. Defensively, I'm not going to give us too much stick. Disappointed with the goal again, I can't lie, but Always disappointed, aren't we? We concede. But when you look at what we did going forward, it's nothing short of shambolic, in my opinion. Completely dominated in midfield yet again. Learned nothing from last week. Same midfield as last week that got swallowed up by Goretzka and Lima. And now we're doing the same thing our following week. And we saw nothing change again. No party coming on. Are these bench players, this is a question for the panel, are these bench players now decorations or can they actually play football? Is Fabio Vieira a bench player or a decoration? Or is he just a cardboard cutout? Because that was 35 million our manager spent on him. Is that now a flop? Is that project done already? Smith Rowe plays well against Luton. Ain't seen the kids since. Um, also, you know, Reese Nelson, 100k a week. Why? What's the point? Just let him go. Go on loan. Go play football. Ain't seen the guy. So, you know, I think I think it was um, Rory or somebody had put a, a start up on Twitter saying that there's been six to eight players that have played more or less minutes than Aaron Ramsdale this year. What the hell is going on? So, yeah, man, look to the bench and it couldn't get any better with Jesus and Trossard on. And um, questions need to be asked about Bakaya Saka being rested at the weekend. I think it's a genuine question. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of negative. Uh, drop him, drop him, not rest. Drop well, yeah, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 
Dylan, to be fair, whatever you want to call it, drop or or or, or bench. Uh, for me, Dylan, or you're dropping Bukayo Saka. Bro, like it's got to get to a point. You know what I'm saying? Like, like at some point, surely we've got to look at it and go right. Like, okay, he's sometimes he gets a goal and an assist, but more time he's stinking out the gaff. Like, just at least give him competition. Like, Reese Nelson's there. What is the point? Like Dan said, what's the point in having him if he doesn't trust him? Like. When players play dead at Man City, you lose your place. Like at Arsenal, he just he just keeps playing him until until it's like until it just gets toxic for him. Because normally when a player plays badly, they just get dropped the next game or they get subbed off. With Saka, it's just like he just he's, he's Arteta's asking for him to just get get it online. You know what I'm saying? Like there needs to be rotation, but it's whether or not he trusts his subs. To be honest, I wouldn't trust Reece Nelson over Saka, but Arteta needs to put like he's, he, he's the one who gave him the contract, so it's on him. And you know what I'm saying, it's not my job. Damn. Anybody else agree with uh, with him that Bakayo Saka needs to be dropped for the next game? Or are you still starting Bakayo Saka versus Wolves? We, you got if, if, the problem. The problem. The problem we have with the Bakayo Saka thing is is our own makeup and how attacking um you know um makeup does go a lot of the our good play and the way the manager wants to play, especially through that front three, is through Bakayo Saka. You know, we haven't got a player, we haven't got a inverted player who's got the same quality or the same sort of attributes as Saka does. So you play Reese Nelson, but the problem is is that when we can't play with an orthodox right winger, so he has to go, he, he feels he has to go to Saka. But you know, a conversation has to be had about his form, it has to be, and, it, and that goes for Martinelli as well. Both of them look completely shagged, and that's why there's a lot of despondency in it. And pain, you know, for what we feel is because not only we, you know, we we feel that we're not as good as we think we are. We've been we we're now in a situation where before Christmas we felt teams working us out. We now got a situation where Bayern set a blueprint we Aston Villa set um, used, and which Bayern replicated last week. Where not only have we we feel we feel that we got Man City a catch, and we feel like. You know the Man City of all the Man City that we know always tend to, you know, see see it through in the last straight of the season. Then you you've got the situation where we're not playing that well. Players look tired. I don't have the confidence that we can, you know, you know we can um, sort of like snap out of um, these two bad results and then, you know, get back on that title charge because tight. I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen tired players get you out of trouble. Tired players tend to be what they are. Tired players who basically, you know, just got nothing left. And I do think Declan Rice is running empty. The two wingers are running empty. And we're at a stage now where the players that we rely on to um, get us over the line just physically aren't going to be able to do it. And they're, they're, uh, their poor form is coming at one time. <laughs> Kenny, can I bring you back to something you said there? Gabriel Martinelli misfiring. Are you giving up on Martinelli? It sounds like you're giving up on him. Well, he, he, because, well Martinelli hasn't been the same since he has the injuries. And the, the, thing, the problem with Martin, the problem we've had with Martinelli is that if you can't, you know, you, there's there, there's a bit of a conundrum. You guys ain't got a lot going to say because he shouldn't even be with, with near our team from a defensive point of view, but. When he doesn't play, we get out of number in the midfield. We find it difficult to get Martinelli in the game. So we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Sinchenko can't defend to save his life. He's a liability. But when he don't play and we're trying to, you know, you know, like I said, um, get on the front foot and attack, because we've got we're always out of number in the midfield, even against average sides. No Sinchenko. Where does Martinelli get in the game? That's the that's why I think. It's wasting some. Whilst I look at Trossard, he's got that kind of a um, movement and genesis quite to get something out of nothing. And, and you know, like Jason's got the work rate. So I say that Martinelli misfiring. There's certain ingredients we need in the team to get Martinelli firing. So, well, we don't want to know it's in Chaco's side. So, so, so that's one ingredient that's going to stop him from misfiring. And then you've got another, another ingredient where we, we're playing Kai Evans through the middle. Which means there's only one, there's only three places, three people for one place for the left. Because you know, Bokar Saka's not getting dropped to the right. So all these ingredients that Mo, that Martinelli needs to, you know, like prosper, they're not in a the team. 
Fair. Oh, uh, yeah. And everyone was talking about how Granit Xhaka got the best out of Martinelli. That might be an issue. Uh, we don't have that midfield balance on that left side. Now, Potts, you brought up a good point with Saka. Dylan brought up a good point with Saka. Martinelli, is it just the whole attack? Souls, what's going on with our attack? What happened to our attack? I just don't think this process makes any sense anymore. And that comes down to the attack. Because when we so really attack- kind of... No, no, I think the whole project has been failed. because, And I'll tell you why. I don't, I don't want to give up on it because I think there's another window to rectify this situation. And we are a window away from... Because I've been digesting both these Aston Villa and the Bayern Munich game. And I've said, let's just say hypothetically, right, we put an Oshman up top. Do we win these games? Probably. I'd, yeah. I'd say it swings in our favour a bit more than probably what it has been. And that's what gives me a bit of hope that, you know what, if we go into this window, we might get it right. But you know the reason why I say I can't trust this process at the moment? We have failed it miserably. Fabio Vieira was mentioned before for 35, 45 million pounds, right? Guess who went for that amount? Kudos. Guess who else went for that amount? Cole Palmer. And guess what? Both of them are firing. Whilst we've got a man sat on the bench that can't even get minutes because he cost you 45 million pounds. Why is he not playing? You needed a goal and you've got so much attacking potential on the bench but you don't want to bring any of them on. But yet you sit there in your press conferences telling the fans to trust your process when you don't trust it yourself. What do you want these guys to do? You play Saka for 100 games in a row when you sign Reese Nelson to a 100k contract and then you tell us to trust it. You tell us that we can't call out these players, that we should be in that stadium, sitting there till the 100th minute supporting them when only person after the Villa game was Odegaard. What are we supposed to do as a fan base other than just blindly keep going on with this? How do what have you done that makes us think another window you're gonna get it right? What makes us think that? Because every single window you play one player out of your window. Havers was this time and Declan Rice last year. It was Jesus now. Zinchenko's gone, like Zinchenko gets played and then he doesn't get played. Jesus is in, he's out, he's in, he's out. It's like every single window. What he does, he brings in three to four players to play that season. Then the next season, we've lost another three four players in that in that season. So we don't ever increase our trust in the squad. We actually decrease it in a way. One second. Is that, it, I get it. Is that a good thing that we're evolving to the point where we're outgrowing no, players? No, because it's four years. You're telling me in four years, this guy, first year, He's evolved and he loses trust in three to four players. The second year, another three to four players get exiled. In the third year, another three to four players get exiled. In the fourth year, another three to four players. And I'll tell you who they are. Fabio Vieira has been exiled. And Mel Smith has been exiled. Ramsdale has been exiled. Leno has been exiled. Thomas Party is apparently fit. You, but you, you're telling me you can't risk him for 10 minutes to turn a tide in your favour. Come on now, let's get off this, right, and say it's no longer... Do we trust this manager or do we back this manager? It's now, does this manager back his back himself and do these players back themselves? Because it's up to them to prove it to us. We've trusted them. And I'll say about 80% of the fan base have online defended the hell out of these players, right? The manager, the board, the owners. Now it's their turn. I don't want to back them. I want to see what they do. Can they repay the favour to the fans? Because those 60,000 who go week in, week out, away, home, all of that, definitely have supported them. They've never turned their backs on these players. But have they, but have they been doing it to us? Because every time we've asked them, can you stand on business, they failed. First round of the FA Cup, first round of the Carabao Cup for three years in a row. Just because you won it in your first year does not now forgive you for the rest of the remainder of your career. You've not been able to surpass any of these knockout stages, but you sit here after these press conferences, coming up with excuses, coming up with many things that you want to rectify. Oh, now you say there's no star quality. How has it taken you four years to realise, oh, wait a minute, this team needs a star. This team needs a game changer. How has it taken you four years? And Or is it the fact that we all are so deluded on this high weed that goes in the Emirates that we don't realise that maybe Saka hasn't been that guy? But we're not honest enough because I'll be real. I don't, I'm starting to believe whether it's fatigue or not. I don't think Saka's the star guy. I think he's a guy that can get us somewhere and he can be a part of this squad and he can definitely be part of the success. But we need someone with him that can be the game winner. He is not a Salah. He ain't a Harlan. He ain't a Foden. He ain't, he ain't a KDB. He's he's not a Foden anymore. Wait, he's not a Foden anymore. 
No, one no. second, one second. When I, say, I, I think, I think Saka, I think not. Saka's fatigued and he's injured. And the reason why Saka's struggling is because of the lack of management of the squad. I don't know if anyone else is on Souls' side. I don't think Saka is one of these guys who's just a good player. I think he's a star player and he's shown it on the world stage for with England. It, I just think you okay. need to have... Go, go, go. Stop, stop, stop. On the world stage against England, against Senegal, Iran, and... He was the best player versus France. But like, he was, what did that amount to? Like, if I'm not mistaken, did if I'm not mistaken, did he not, another did, game he not, did he not do well in the Euros also? Last Euros. Okay, well, cool. let's run through the Euros. <clears throat> Ukraine, Czech Republic, Scotland where we drew nil-nil. Uh... Uh, uh, Croatia in the group set where he didn't even play. Uh, Germany played pretty well when we won 2 0. Um, and Denmark, okay, so yeah, and he did you, can only play, you can only play who you play. I'm not sitting, he played well against Denmark and Germany. I'm not doing this revisionist history where Bukayo Saka is not all of a sudden. I'm, I'm actually more with a gal here because I don't feel this guy's been managed right by Mikel Arteta at all. 100%. I agree with that. 100%. This- when you're playing that many games, it's a joke, man. And yeah, but that, that's on the manager. Play, that, it is the, on the, the manager. Man, right? the manager and, and, if the man, for, since since lot since um Bakaya Saka got promoted from playing at the left side of defence and then further up as a left forward, when he's moved him to the invert into the inverted and right right winger, albeit with his left foot, the fact is is that he hasn't given them a significant rest since 2020. He's all. It was always been a case where if you give the ball to Bakayo Saka, he can win you the game, and that's always been his tactic. He's never dropped him because, in his mind, you know he feels he's a, he's our best player, and everything has to go through the lad. So, what what he's done, what, what he's done is that he's he's failed to give him the the competition he needs. He's failed to actually get a player where you have two for every position, and that's why we're upset. Is that the reason why we feel we can't? We can't compete. We're still lagging behind Man City is because if in order to compete on all fronts, there's no evidence there's two players for every position. There is no because you 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 the you brought is, up though, the, Kenny, this is the problem that I've been trying to bring up yeah. for a while now that there's a few yeah. players out there that we play that have absolutely no cover whatsoever, and the drop off is a joke. Let me read this out to you. I spoke to Chris Hudson earlier, right? Okay. How many players do you think? Man City have have, have uh, started. How many players for Man City have started forty matches this season? Just give me a number. How many do you I think? I think it it's is? something like seventeen. Thirteen. Right. The answer the answer is zero. Okay, because mm-hmm. they've got a good squad, so they rotate. Now, how yeah. many players do you think have started forty matches this season for Arsenal? Eleven. Seven. So ours is seven. Okay. Right. So, Gabriel, these are the seven. Gabriel, Saliba. That means we have no backup at centre-back that he trusts. Mm-hmm. Erdegaard. That means we have no attacking midfielder, even though we've got four of them on the bench that he trusts if he's mm-hmm. out. Ben White, Rice, Saka, funnily enough, and Havertz. Now, Havertz mm-hmm. is a bit different because he plays in a few different positions, right? But the other players are nailed on in that first eleven, which is a good thing because they're quality. But it's a bad thing because we've got no cover. So when people start saying to me, Dan Potts, give it a 6 out of 10. <laughs> we signed Rice. That's a 12 out of 10 in itself. Mm-hmm. You're talking crap because our backup clearly does not trusted by this manager. So when he flings Eddie on at 87 minutes, which is a disgrace, by the way, yeah, running around mm-hmm. like a headless chicken, I get pissed. When Nelson... And Vieira, we're being told, are giving contracts and sign for 35 million ahead of Bukayo Saka, who looks crap at the moment, isn't getting on the pitch. I get pissed. Mm. When I get Erdegaard coming off against Villa and we have no cover to come on and go mm. even slightly close to his position, I get pissed off. So when people say to me, oh, well, Saliba mm. got injured and Rob Holding's the backup and we've not signed the right sided centre back still, we are damn lucky that he hasn't got another injury. And this is what mm. pisses me off. When the fans call you negative for saying, I don't think we've really strengthened in the right areas. And our bench is dead still. It's just poor, man. You said the same, you said the same things said, last season. I just want to draw the comparison. The reason why the bench is poor is because we are making signings for top four players and then getting into a title race. We are making signings to get into a title race and realizing that's, that's the, players, 
the players. Why are we signing for four players? Why are we signing for four players? I am, I am, I'm just going to give you my logic. You let me know if you disagree afterwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of, at the beginning of uh, the season where we, where we bottled top four, we were looking to get in back into the Champions League. We did not make signings that were players that we thought were going to be final pieces to the puzzle to help us win a league title. We were still trying to round out the squad. So we brought in squad players. Some of those squad players are not good enough right now to be challenging for the league in this team. Then we brought in last season, we brought players to then get us over the hump to get us back into the Champions League. Apparently the same left back that we thought revolutionized our, our way of play is now inexpensive uh, to the point where he's unplayable defensively a liability. And the striker who we signed last year, who was supposed to be one of our solutions to our attack, is now becoming already a squad player at best in Gabriel Jesus. So the issue is we are signing players previously to get us to a certain level. Now that we're at this level, we need, we need to sign players for this level. We we were trying to strive to get to this level. Eventually, when you get to this level, you're going to outgrow players. I think it's a natural situation where when a team gets to a title challenge, you're not going to have the same level of quality players where you're trying to get to the top four. I disagree. Liverpool didn't need to do this. Liverpool didn't all of a sudden outgrow their players. Salah was still good enough. Mane was still good enough. You know, Wijnaldum was still good enough. You know, all of these players that they also signed early on in their sort of, whatever you want to call it, a project process, whatever, mm. they didn't need to get rid of them to win the league title. All they did, one second, all they did was add to, like one of a couple of pieces but they still trusted their squad. They still trusted their bench. But you're not, you're mm. telling me that ESR couldn't do anything. Like he could, you're telling me after that looting, he can't do anything. Vieira couldn't do anything. Thomas Party all of a sudden mm. can't do anything. No, these players can. What you're doing is you're making excuses for this manager because you want to believe that this guy hasn't made a mistake. You can't tell me that every single time he signed Fabio Vieira knowing he's going to become a title challenger. That's the process. That was the project. Whether it's five, mm. six, seven, eight, well, I don't care. Phase 100, I don't care. But the point yeah. is, he wanted to, by the way, he yeah, wanted to win the Champions battle. League this season. He said to Winnie, I'm signing you because in three to four seasons, we're going to win the Champions League. That was mm. this year. So you can't okay. tell me Fabio Vieira wasn't in anticipation he's going to get back into these competitions, that he's not going to start competing. You can't just jump into competing for the for, for the Champions League when you can't okay. compete. For the One second. First things first, that Liverpool team, then the same thing that you just mentioned with those players playing consecutive games, Liverpool's teams that won league titles and Champions Leagues, that what they, that's what they did. They we wrote that. on we the post for a moment, but all They wrote sudden, on the post field. Do you know what happened after that, Do you know what happened after that? They, they couldn't won. get into the top four. No, they struggled, mate. They got absolutely... Yeah, they fell off a cliff. But well, my point that. is... Oh, no, 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 you got, you're going away from the point. What I said to you was they didn't need to do this whole, oh, oh, we got top four, so now we need to change our players to compete for the league. They just did it. They had the same players competing hey, for the Hey, are four, you there? But, the but, every, but every team does things differently. Just because Liverpool didn't do it that way doesn't mean that Arsenal have to do it that way. So my point is this when it comes to me, like this whole Arteta thing, right? Yes, okay, Fabio Vieira is the example of the player that you've been, you've been ranting about. He bought Fabio Vieira because he thinks he's talented and he can use him. He's been injured and he's not stepped up to the plate. That's one. And that's why I use that same example. I use the same example that you use. My point is that every team in the league buys players that sometimes don't work out for them. And that's the truth. This is not unique to Arsenal. Like it's not unique to us that some of the players that we bought are not, you know, stepping up to the plate. ESR, who was an amazing player for us, um, a few a few couple of seasons ago with uh, Bukayo Saka, both of them literally carrying that team because of his injury. We saw how that that has regressed him. We know that the talent is still well, there. We don't know if it regressed him because no, no, he hasn't no. played. But that's what I'm saying. He was injured for almost a whole year. Right. So by the time he comes back, regardless, even when he's played, he's not looked like the times he. The, the opportunities he's had, he's not looked like... Sorry, he was injured for a whole year? I said ESR, ESR was injured for close to a year. Like, he, he's yeah. up, even when he was given opportunities, he didn't look like the ESR that we knew. You understand? So we, so you can still see that, okay, well, the player is in there. It, something just needs to be tweaked. Now, here's my thing with, with where we are at. Where we're at right now, we've, we're challenging still this season for, for the Premier League. It's not over. Nobody. Yeah, I mean, not, people need to people need to allow this whole yeah, we've bottled the yeah, league. Yeah, like, exactly. I get it. It's losing not, to Villa tonight yeah. now, but it's not. It's not, over. it's not over. And and the loss to Aston Villa was more disappointing for me and painful because the boys did not play a hundred and ten percent. It wasn't the loss itself that I was mad at. It was the fact that they didn't play a hundred and ten percent. This is the first loss in the Premier League in twenty twenty four. This is the first loss in twenty twenty four. 
and immediately it happened. Look at reactionary, emotional Arsenal fans. Everything is gone to shit. Everything is gone to shit. Yeah, what, what, what did I say that for? What did I say that for? Because you've been, so my, a my, you've been my, a show my, me before. You've been my, a show me before. And I, I t and we've, we've, we, you on the show there, girl, when we said, how many points can we drop? And I said, we can't drop any points because the margins are too. Are very, I, get, I get it. But here, so, let me, let me, let me, you, let me, you, let me you, let you let drop points. We can analyze from whatever angle we want to look at it, right? And say, yes, okay, as a, as a fan, I don't want my team to drop points. No no team wants to drop points, but we, people are going to drop points because it's a competitive sport. Somebody has to win, somebody has to lose. The difference is we've not shown, like Arsenal has, all from January, has been shown good form. Suddenly we're getting our dip. There's a parable in life. You get to the tip, you, you get your dip. I'm hoping that this dip is over now. And we can just get back to picking up form but and winning the rest of the game. Okay, okay. okay. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. I need you, to you talk it there, Dale. Hold on, you keep you got, you got, just real quick. It's two seasons in a row. I agree with you that it's two seasons in a row. Three seasons. Listen, right, you, got, yeah, you can call it three, you got, actually. You can, you can call it two, you can call it three. If you look at teams that have gone up against this same Man City team in the last 10 years, how many times have they? The, 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 the Liverpool, they've won it just once as well. In the eight years that Klopp has been, we're talking about Premiership. Forget the Champions League for now. Premiership. In the eight years that Klopp has been here against Pep, he's only won it once. That's how hard it is to win it. And how many okay. times has he, has he challenged him? A, a bunch of times. So are you saying it's a no. mental thing? I just, Deo, I just want to know where you're going with this. Is it a mental just, issue for you? I think, I think the mentality is built when you go through these adversities and then you you realize, okay, this is I tried it this way. This is how to now think about it next time. That's how are you, you deal with a shot at the fans, or are you taking a shot at the players or the manager? What is I think, I think, I think the, our fan base is very um, emotional, reaction, they're very reactionary. I think a lot of them, not everybody. I've heard people who are, you know, I like I'm I'm upset at the team because of their performance. If they performed the hundred percent, like the performance against Bayern for me was annoying as well because you they played like we're not going to score, but we're not going to let you score. And the minute right. Bayern got a chance, Bayern scored. And I'm just like, this is what I don't like. If you go there and you give me 150% and you lose, I'll be okay with that. I'll say, you know what? You gave your utmost best, but you know, you it, it just wasn't your day. But when you don't okay. give your utmost best, that's Dayo. that's I, I get triggered. Before Dayo, you before you, you before you go on Deo, I just need to tell people in the chat, do me a favor. We have over 128 of you guys on YouTube right now. Do me a favor, hit that like button. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost a penny. We should at least be on 70 likes by now. Do me that favor, okay? And also, I know Dan Potts has to leave soon. So I'm just going to ask Dan this question before we get back to a flowing conversation. Uh, Dan, Arsenal are struggling currently in April. Why do you think that is? Do you put it down strictly to tactics, mentality, players' form? If you could point out one thing over everything else that you feel like that could be changed, that could fix this, what would you say that is? I don't think there is one thing. Um, I think there's a mentality issue at Arsenal because April, we crumble every single year. And to be fair, it goes before Mike Mikel Arteta. Yeah, we've done it over Wenger plenty of times. Um, we did it under Emery. Um, and now we're doing it under Mikel Arteta. But let's have it right. You know, I want to ask the panel, do you think Mikel Arteta will win Arsenal or Premier League? If the answer is yes, I'd love to know why and what evidence he's shown that he can. And if the answer is not sure, then why is it such a criminal thing for an Arsenal fan to say, at the end of the season, I'd like to ask questions about could we do better? I don't think that's a crime. Some people think it is. They go absolutely mad. They lose their heads. They're like, what? Mikel Arteta sacked. Never going to happen. He is the club. He's not. Neither was George Graham. Neither was Arsene Wenger. Neither was Unai Emery. You don't fall in love with a football manager. You fall in love with a football club. So why is it such a bad, bad thing to say, maybe we could do better? Crime, criminal, hang him, get him out of the club, get away from me, you're toxic. No, you're not, man. You're asking a genuine question. Yeah, I see Curtis put out something on Twitter earlier saying that Mark Hughes did an all right job at Man City, but they needed a Mancini to come in and win them a title. Brendan Rodgers did a good job at Liverpool, but they needed a Klopp to go win them a title. Ranieri comes second and did really well with Chelsea, but they needed a Mourinho to come and win, a, win us a title. Maybe we need someone to come win us a title and say, do you know what, Mikel? Cheers for this, man. You've set a brilliant foundation. We've got a good younger crop players, but you're not quite the man to take us across the line. But we believe this guy is. 
Why is that such a crime? That's all I'm asking it's, the panel. It's for. not. It's not a crime, it's not. Uh, Dan. It's not a crime, Dan. You're right. Um, you are right. If if he's not the one taking over the, over the line, we can look at somebody else. But the question I'm, I I I pose to people is this: I'm like, let's look at current the current state of the market of managers, right? The current state, and we're talking about managers, right? Who um are, are they have to be better than Mikel by far? A manager that is, that has a proven record. How many are available right now, and how many are going to come to Arsenal? Zidane doesn't want to come to England. We, we know that for a fact. Zabi, uh, Xavi uh, is not leaving Bayern Leverkusen. He, he signed it. He's, he's going to remain there. Like, the question is, the stage Arsenal is in where we're competing for the title, and we're, 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 you know, we're competing for the title year in, year out, which, which is last season and this season. The next level has to be winning it. And winning it against Pep means you have to go and get the best of the best. So my question is, we get rid of... You think... It is, I've heard Arsenal fans say Deserbi. Deserbi is not going to get us over the line. No, Inzaghi from Inter. Inzaghi. Inzaghi is not going to get us over the line. I, I guarantee you. How do we know that? that? How do we know no, that? No, no. How do you that, know that? But that's... But that's, that's see, my point is, you're talking about... You're talking about... If you're not getting the best of the best to come to come head-to-head -head with Pep, if you're not going to be able to bring in an Ancelotti or somebody who can literally just come in here... And, See, Dale, and, I agree with that. I, I totally agree with that, right? Because for me, a lot of people say get rid, get rid. If we're going to get rid of Mikel Arteta and go and get bloody Amarim or Deserbi, just keep Arteta. Because for me, they ain't, no, they ain't proven, right? But, when, yeah. but for me, I'm saying if the next opportunity for us or the next appointment is a Carlo Ancelotti, a Hansi Flick, a Zidane, a Simeone Inzaghi, then for me, they have a record and a CV that says I win and I get us over the line. And that is mm. why I will always have concerns and I will always have question marks over Mikel Arteta getting us across the line until he does it. And that's not me being harsh. That's just me being factual. This guy has not proved to me he can get us across the line. So I will always have doubts. Unfortunately, done a lot of good things. Got us challenging again. Spent the money to mm. get us there. Done everything right with the club. Everyone's happy again in terms of coming to the Arsenal and supporting the Arsenal. He's brought the Arsenal back. But will he get us over the line? And nobody can say yes to that with their chest or heart, surely. Because they haven't seen it. You might yeah, want to believe yeah, it. Yeah. I want to believe it. Yeah, I want to believe yeah, it. Yeah, going yeah. To do a next season. But I've got yeah, to be realistic, Dan, man. Yeah, Dan, the proof in the pudding yeah, is you, you, ask, you ask questions. Why can't get us over the line? Well, the first the first um, you know, demerit mark against a guy is to make our free squad. We all know that to win the big trophies and compete in all fronts, you need to have at least two players for every position. And you should be able... You Now, last season was like the litmus test where we got into a stage where we challenged the title, but we found that to our cost, our score was too thin. E. Gow always talks about Saliba and that you went for Saliba to, um, to Rob Holding. Factual. No doubt. We'll never argue about that with you. That was that was the sign to actually say, right, to win, not to just compete with Pep, but to beat Pep, I need to have a squad that is capable that when we get to the championship rounds, especially when, when there is going to be some sort of fatigue in April and that when my best players need a, need a rest or what you lot go rotate, I need to be able to say, right, you are going to give me this, give me the same quality, kind of quality that this guy's given me. And, that, and that's what we haven't been able to do. You cannot compete, win the league, or complete all fronts, or a FA Cup, Champions League, or League Cup, or you know, the league without without a squad. And if he doesn't, re, you know, eradicate that problem, then I'm sorry, he's not the right man for the job because that is one thing he could do. And if he isn't doing it, then I want someone else who can. I want the best man for the job because yeah, the I, best I, man. I, is I think it is. No, quickly, quickly, quickly. This is what people. The, another thing, though, you hear when you when you when you bring up these questions and you ask them who they want, though, like I think people forget that like. It's the club's. Uh, it's the club's job to find these people. A person like oh. Fabio Vieira, obviously, he's not very good. But it's the club's job to find these people. People ask you, who would you bring in? Who would you do this? Like, I, I, how many Tottenham fans? Well, if you'd ask them a year ago today, you would say, "Oh yeah, we'll have, we'll have." These how many Tottenham fans would have said, "We'll have Pofte Koglu"? And how many Leicester fans would have said, "Oh yeah, we'll have Ranieri"? Or like, no. it's random. I like, hear the your club point, but you're people. on a podcast. You're meant to discuss this. You can't just say Arteta out and then just leave it at that. If you're gonna say it, back it with what you're gonna do. What's the plan afterwards? I'm not saying to you. This is this, is, this is generally this is people who just sit there and. I go, personally, I personally think this is my plan. The club should give Arteta this summer transfer window to sort out the attack, get the difference maker that we need in these kind of big games. Because if you look at the results that we had this season, Dan, you you mentioned the manager, but look at the results that we had this season. You look at the Aston Villa game away. 
We yeah. we did enough to win that game. We couldn't get over the line because the players were were not were not clinical enough. You look at you look at the game against uh, West Ham at home. We did enough once again. Couldn't get over the line. Newcastle. We were poor. I would say on uh, on the offensive end. Defensively, we did enough. We we conceded a jammy goal. Even against Bayern in that game, first half we were on top of them. I thought we were we were somewhat impressive to be that positive away at Bayern in the Champions League. But it was their strategy. They tactically they outdone us at the end. It, these games that we we all lost, we did didn't go. score a single goal. I fully hear you. Let me let me let me see. I, I so fully hear what you're attack. saying. I, no no, go go. I understand. On so many occasions this season, it's fully the players that are letting them down. Yeah, you, like yeah. you mentioned, you're you're better away when we're not scoring goals. Better away when we're not scoring. Dan's got to go. Dan's got to go. I'm just gonna say, guys, go check out the Twelve Man Podcast. I put the link to his chat to his channel okay. in the in the description. <laughs> So please do check it out. I'm on there all the time, usually on Tuesdays when we do the Arsenal chat. So uh, I'll see you next Tuesday, Dan. Have a good one, bro. Big up, man. Big up, everyone. Make sure you smash the like here. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time. In a bit, again. Yeah, Say later, man. Peace. 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 Yeah, man. Guys, it's we should go, also go, be go, on go. at least we should be on at least 70 likes by now. How mm. are we only on 50 right. likes? And by the way, there was one super chat. Uh, there was one message that I seen from Lee Gunner. Lee Gunner is going in in the chat right now. He said, "We don't need a striker. We share goals around." What changed? No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I hear the whole sharing goals around. Yeah, but what I wanted to point out. Form changes. Form changes. Lee Gunner. If you don't understand what form is. I'll tell you, you're right, Gal. Yeah. 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 right, Gal. In many games, Arteta's doing the right thing. He's playing the right system. And there, there are plenty of examples this season. Villa away, Liverpool at home in the cup is a big one because I think if we beat Liverpool at home in the FA Cup, where we need to, all we were all we needed to was finish chances, like we 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 dominated them, we just needed to finish our chances. I think if we win that game, we we could be even in with a chance of winning an FA Cup right now. The players have let him down on numerous occasions, but the problem is, yeah, is that he is the one signing these players, letting him down. So where we can keep playing the whole R, oh, he needs this player to sign this player to sign that player. What the hell? I hear it. Can you guys hear him? Down. But he's the man with oh, pen to paper with these guys. He's the one signing Jesus. He's the one signing Vieira. He's the one giving Eddie new contract. Do you, do you, get, do you get what I'm trying to say? He's the one putting these players on the pitch and, and, and letting them let him down. So at what point is it his fault because he's not getting the signings right? He's bringing in no, like, you know we need right. a striker. Okay, okay, we so, knew so, that. So, and he brought so, Havertz so, who doesn't know so, if he's a striker so, or a so let's, 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 reel, let's reel back a little bit here. You see, it's easy to Go just... On. To, to turn around and say that after one loss of one game and because it's it's a crunch time at the season, of course, if we win that game, we're on top of this uh, the top we're of the league and, and we look at no, no, I get no, no, I get that. But hey, you can say what you can say what you will of of Mikel Arteta, right? But this man had no CV before we hired him, and we knew that. That's that's level number one. He had no CV. This is his first job. Number two, we knew that at the club, but we hired him. He's taken us back. No, 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 no. It's not. I'm, I'm, you, I'm, you, no, no. I, listen, him... listen. No, no, no. I'm not giving. I'm pointing out what facts are. Facts are facts here. It's not about pity or what. My opinion, my emotions, my pity doesn't matter in this. These are the facts. The facts are that we hired a coach who had no experience, but we knew that we wanted to take us from somewhere, from, from where we were to a different place. And he has delivered so far to where we are at in the four years he has been here. We have not won a trophy because it's easy. I hear Arsenal fans say, well, the FA Cup he won in the first year, that was Unai Emery's team. Okay, great. You want to give Unai Emery the accolades of the FA Cup, but then you want to give him the, the, the losses of the eighth position. You can't do that. You can't in one breath be like, oh yeah, guess what? Uh, it was Unai Emery's team that won the FA Cup for him. It wasn't his team. Okay, so if you want to judge him based on his team, his team has only been fully formed this in the last two. No, no, in the last two, in the last two seasons, and, and in those two seasons, he has challenged. Last season, none of you gave him a chance to even challenge. Last season, the goal was I did. Four. I did. I no, said no, no, in pre-season, no, look at his team's no, no. plan. Look who we no. signed. We should go for the league. Let me, like, well, you're, 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 not the, you're not the norm. You're the exception then. You're the exception. You're one of the few people who probably did. But majority of everybody, and if you look at the numbers, the numbers don't lie. Majority of people said, hey, this guy won't even get you into top four. And when, and when we challenged for the title last season and eventually bottled it, which is what we did, mm -hmm. and I agree because we bottled it at the end of the season, mm -hmm. they said, oh, they said it's a one-year wonder flash in the pan. Next season, they're not going to be there. They're not going to be challenging next season. Come mm -hmm. this season, he's challenging again now, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden, one loss in 2024, and throw the baby and the bathwater out. Let's go. It's all horrible. It's it's no, not. No, no, it's no, all no, no, no. I hear you. I hear you. You're missing a girl's point. You're missing Dan's point. You're missing, point. You're missing, point. You're point. You're missing Souls' point. The point is, we know he's done a great job of taking us from D to B, D to C. He's done a great job of taking us from C to B. 
is Arteta the man to take us from B to A? Because it's two whole different jobs. That's like, the question. That's what I said. I said. Take us there. Okay. And I said. I want to know. I want to know where everyone. I want to know where everyone stands here. Kenny, mm. uh, Dylan, Souls, Deo. I personally believe that Mikel Arteta should be given one more year, and if he cannot do it in the, uh, this upcoming year by sorting out the attacking, that's the, game, that's the limit. No, that's that's the limit. That's that the next year is the limit. Like the absolute. And I, I've, I've I lost patience a long time ago, but next year is the absolute limit because this year, this time, he has no excuse because we bang on about having the, one of the best defenses in Europe. We do have one of the best midfields about when we hit, when we actually pick the right midfield, which he, he rarely does. But we do have some of the best midfield and defenders about. I still think mm. the keeper's shit. But our attack, he's got the <laughs> he's got the transfer market to address this attack. If he doesn't sort out this attack, it's, it's fully on him. And it is. But, well, but one second, there is still there is still a hypothetical that you guys are forgetting. We can still win this league. I don't. No, no, <laughs> right, it's not over. It's far from over. Mathematically, we can. But but. The, Mathematically, there's no doubt we can. But you were, you're asking the question: Will I give Mikarta a time? No, he's had enough time. Four years is enough, you know. Because the fact is, is that you're 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 talking about a process. All right, I I could when you challenge for the title in your, in last season and you challenge this season. Sorry, mate, that's not a process. You're competing because your your process is all about let's get us to compete. With the big guns and Mikhail Stein's done it. Now, when you're competing, it's now BLA. And I do not think that this man is going to be the man that gets the title. So I'm on the same page as Dan. Hi. And I'm on the same and I'm on the same page as um, as Curtis. Let's get another, let's get a man in who can now hypothetically it's a challenge. I don't think I, I, I'm not Egal. giving him another Egal. Egal. hypothetically, yeah. right? Let's just say let's just say in an alternative universe. Um, yeah. Man City drop. Man City because of loss to Real Madrid, lose a little bit of steam, drop a couple of points. Arsenal go top. Let's just say Liverpool as well, just drop a couple of points. And at the end of the season, Arsenal win on maybe say points difference or whatever. Oh, can, right? can Arsenal still win the league? You're no, saying no. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, Arsenal can still win the league. It's still open for anybody to win it. I, I'm not. I'm not going to put it past it. This this league is crazy. You, we've seen lower teams go up and, and play. You know, a, a tie with Man City. Anything can happen. Chelsea this weekend. If if they knock them out of this uh, trophy again, it might just be like, okay, this is it. You're from your treble to your double. Let but me, yeah, let me let me just land on this again. Sorry, real quick. Okay. If in an alternative universe, Arsenal goes and wins the league, Mikel Arteta wins the league. In an alternative universe, I'm saying it again, in an alternative universe, this happens. Everybody saying Arteta out now should still say Arteta out next season. I don't want to hear them yeah. saying keep him. I don't want to hear them well, saying keep him. If Arteta wins the trophy, no, 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 I want no. to be proven wrong, but we're talking That's about right now. That's my point. My point is that, see, my point is that Sorry, there's still a, my point is there's still a chance right now. So for me, I will say to myself, He's, we're not we've, not, we've, we've not. Surely we've not, we're not going to lose to Wolves. We're not going to lose to Wolves. We've not regressed. We've not regressed. We've not regressed. We've not regressed. I know, but we haven't regressed as a club. I don't understand this far outcry. Yes, we set the standard. We're trying to get to the standard. You don't get to the standard overnight. You're not you trying. No, no, you're not trying to get the standard. You challenge the title. You're not the standard. Why are you saying? Why are you saying we're trying to get the standard? If you challenge the title twice in consecutive years, you're at the standard. You're making excuses, Dale. We're not, what excuse did I just make? Arsenal what did I say? Where the fuck what did, did I just say? You're what did I just say? You weren't even listening to what I said. You're doing that you you you're doing that you are doing this down by saying, oh, when we get there. We're changing now. We're the third biggest club in the country, so we should what, demand. What, what, what did I say start. just now? You should, or ask what big club to you, Dale. Yes, what did I, what did I? What did I just I'm say now? I'm asking a question. I can't answer your question. If you're not, I, I, was, I was saying... Do you consider us a big club? Do you consider us a big club? I'm asking you. Simple question. You've just, you've just gone on a tangent, right? Because you I'm not going on a tangent. I I'm asking you a question. You, you say, said. you go on like with this... Exp that, with the, that, with, that I, if you challenge the title two years in a row, that... We're not at we're not at this stage where we can go from A to B. You still That's not what I said. That is not what I said. Because, because this. Here, you're here, wrong. here you are. Here you are again. Listening to me. Here you are again. Listening to respond. You're listening to respond. You didn't listen to understand what I said. I did not. What what I said exactly, and I'll quote myself again is, for me, Arteta can get from B to A. Because we are still cool, in prove the title. it. Cool, prove oh, it. Simple. Hold End hold on. Prove it. Like, no, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. I said he can because we're still. Mathematically, in the title race this season, we're not out of it. Yeah. If we if we were out of it, like let's just say, like right now, we're five points behind. I'd be like, forget, get this guy out of the club. He doesn't have what it takes. The fact that he is in and about it and could still win it, 
I'm now saying if in an alternative universe he wins it, I don't want to hear the people who said, oh, Ateta out next to they say, okay, well, Ateta should stay. They should keep that same energy is all I'm saying. You, That's all so I'm you're saying. Say, you're saying you're, you're saying we're saying our terrorat. You're saying we're saying our terrorat. We don't like him. We're not we're not our terrorat. Um, it's, it's not okay. You're saying. If it's you're not saying that we're, not liking him, it's wanting what's yeah. best for the club. Exactly. You're just you've just said that people are terrorat are our terrorat because for personal reasons. That's what you're just saying. Because if they can't change their minds, then they they're saying it because they don't know nothing about football. That we just woke up one day and thought, yeah. We don't want a rookie manager. We're never going to give him a chance because we we just go there and we we hate on everyone. That's wrong to, to you know, say that they can't change their minds. I seen I see uh, Deo. Did he disappear? Uh, before before you before we go any further, I just want to know, Souls Dylan, do you guys also believe that we can still win this league, or do you think it's done? hundred percent still think that we can still win this league. My issue is, it's going to get to a point where I know I know people like David. They believe we he will win us. He they believe he'll take us from B to A, but there, there's a limit. Like there, 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 there is a limit. Like it, this can't go on forever. I, I believe, I, I believe, I believe he could too. I believe, but like he's got to prove it now because it just goes on and on and on and on and on. I'm genuinely. Uh, I said this season was the last chance. We're still competing. Genuinely, next season, that's it. That's it. Like ne this summer transfer window, if we don't manage to win the league, that is it. Yeah, okay, that, that let, me, is... let me let me ask Paul a different question. Obviously, Souls, you still believe we can do it, but you don't think we will. No, no, not at all. Because I mean, if I start giving up as a fan base, we need, we all need to believe we can do it. It's a two point. If you look, the reality is, if people don't think we can win the league at this point, they never believe they could. Because you can't give up at two points when there's seven games to go. If that's the mentality that Arsenal Football Club, as a fan base, as players, as managers, as a board, as whatever, even as a cleaning lady, you need to pack your bags and get out. Because you ain't fit enough to wear that badge. You ain't fit enough to represent us, and that goes to the fans as well. Because the reality is, we're, as Kenny said, we're a big club. Two points should not be the difference between whether we can win a league title or not. That should be the, okay, we screwed up. But now it's time we go on a crusade. We murder these teams that come in front of us. We you should know, not be know. sitting here with the mentality of, oh, but it's Man City. Oh, but it's Pep. Did, we, did Wenger say that when Fergie was there? Arguably the greatest Premier League manager. Fergie said, let me take it to you. And you know what he did? He went undefeated against him. Did George Graham like and these men like go and look at the other team that oh Liverpool's there, but Man United are there, but this team is there, but this team is there, so we can't do it. We should just be able to compete. No, we're Arsenal. So either that side of the fan base calls us a small club and stops acting like we're big with all these world class players with all these stars in the team, or they just admit that they're deluded because it, it can't. Nothing, none of what they say can be makes any sense to me. We're either a team with a certain players that are world-class, like the likes of Bukasaka, like they always want to prop them up, or they're not. Either way, they're lying to themselves in some motion. For me, okay. we've got to win it. We can't, we, why am I going to give up now? Do you see Man City fans, when they were sat third, giving up on their team? Regardless no. of whether they've done it, they've proven it or not. Do you see Liverpool fans giving up when they were like one or two? No, no, no Liverpool fans, fans are giving up at this point. Now they probably are, because they're third, like, like three or four points behind. Well, not when they were like one or two points behind. Do you think they gave up when they lost the league at, what was it, 97 points and City got 100 points? No, they believed Breach. at the very end. That's Breach. The Breach. The, 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 thing is, the thing is, Liverpool fans, Arsenal fans are giving up because Man City have a psychological edge over us. That's the reality. Simple. And, and that's the part that kills me. And that's why I'm saying that, look, we're, we're not a team that should be given up, not at this stage. So when people are like, oh, Arteta out, and I'm like, listen, just, we still have a chance to win I, this. I think... To sit here, think... to sit here well, hold on, sorry, girl, sorry, to sit here and call yourself a big club, and then when you lose one game in the turn of the year, you turn around and say it's all over, then that means you don't believe you're a big club. Because a big club is like, you know what, I got knocked down, we're going to stand up and we're going to do it again. And no, this no. team has proved, and, and that's, what, that's, what, that's what winners do. If you really but, want to be a winner, they, if you really they, want to be a winner, yeah. that, that's why I don't understand the fan base, right? It, it, it does my head in because they say, oh, we're the third biggest club. We're so large. We're huge. We're Arsenal. We're this, we're that. But one little knock. Do you know what makes you big? When you get knocked down, you stand up and you do it. That's what makes you big. And that's why I like that's what, that's what, that's what, that's Asking the manager whether he can do that or not, it's not an invalid debate to have on a podcast. Yes, oh, I no, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not an invalid debate. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying like I, I, don't, I don't understand the... The logic of, oh, Man City is such a big club. Pep is such a great coach, and nobody can beat Pep. And then Ateta is a butler. Like you, those two things cannot be true. 
no, no, they can't. Like, yeah, no, 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 like, psychological you know, advantage is bollocks, bruv. We've beaten, <clears throat> we've beaten Man City and Liverpool this season. Furthermore, neither of them have beaten us this season, and we've beaten both of them. But, but you want to know the problem point. is? We got one point from Fulham, and uh, what do you call yeah, it? Like, I know, I know. Again, I'm aware that's the problem. I'm saying this mental edge stuff is a load of bollocks. We need to fucking just have a bit of hours in games that's crunch time, bruv. Like Villa at home. Like yeah, okay, Villa are top side. Villa have got something to fight for as well. But like. Even throw it back to how how did we end up two 0 down against Southampton last season? How like it's just it's it's beyond it's beyond the cycle psychological thing with Man City. We we we've conquered yeah, that. Conquered. I'm not gonna lie. We went away to Spurs. We got that win. We went away to the Etihad. Didn't lose. We beat them at home for the first time in God knows how many years. We we've, we've gone away to Anfield. Not lost two years in a row. We've beaten them at home two years in a row. Now this site, this Man City Liverpool bridge gap thing gone. We're we're there. We're there. Look as as you, you see all three. We're there. But the problem is. Okay. It's, it's, it's when it's when it's games like Southampton, Villa, these 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 easier games that are supposed to be easier, and they just switch off. And I don't okay. know if that's down to management or if that's down to complacency. I, I just I just want to say we're here, April twentieth, and we also have the Chelsea game to be to be played, right? Their it's next, so so we're going to be playing Wolves and Chelsea. Their next mm. game is going to be the the Nottingham Forest game. They're not playing the Tottenham game this week. They're playing the FA Cup. So Man City. By the time they played the Nottingham Forest game, we would have played. By the time they played the Nottingham Forest game, we would have played two games. We we go back on top. Come no, Tuesday. we would have played three because we played um, Chelsea midweek. So yeah. technically, we could have played three games by the time they played their game. It could be a situation where we'd be back on top by six points, but mm. we have to win our games. Are you guys confident Arsenal can get a result versus Wolves, Chelsea at home, Wolves away, and Tottenham away? Those next three games. Simply, because that's that's yeah. where that's where your belief. I was confident we beat Southampton at home, who were, who were like basically relegated while we we're trying to fight for a league. This, yeah. the that's last, is that's, last, that's last season, though. We're talking about this. Yeah, no, season. no, no. Like, but it might like, be last season, but it's also this. The problem with this Arsenal team is I'm confident that we'll go to United and Spurs, win both those games, and fuck up against Wolves. <laughs> that's the problem. You know? yeah. Yeah. Look, Gal, it, it, it's got to be one game at a time. You know, we can't you can't play Chelsea and Tottenham before you play Wolves. It's got to be about Wolves. And what we're gonna to have to do is that we're gonna to have to bounce back because at the end of the day, we've got a chance of winning the title, you know. You know, and you know, like I said, do the good things that we were doing before, you know, we had this, you know, before um, you know, replicate the the performance against Brighton. That's what we need to do. You know, at the end of the day, as fans, we've got a right to sort of, you know, um and ah. But yeah, the day the players they got to snap out of it. You're you're out of Europe, boohoo. You no, let me finish. You're out of Europe, boohoo. You know, the end of the day you have got to get back on track, and you know, and get back to doing the best we can do. Because at the end of the day, teams now are going to be at it. Wolves are going to at home. They're going to be at it. So we we got to be able to deal with that, and we got to have we got to be physically at it, and we have got to be mentally at it to go back. Because the end of the day, can't afford to drop points. Let's get back at it. I hope, and on the end of the day, I'm going to be watching the game at 7.30, you know, with my fist pumped and ready to go. You know, but at the end of the day, we're running out of games where we can't afford to drop any more points. It's a no-no. We need to put pressure on City. Do I think we're going to do it? Look, of course I think we're going to do it. But at the end of the day, it's not down to me. It's down to the players to wipe, wipe them out. It's down to the, the captain to say, you know what? No more talk about buying, no more thinking about, you know, not getting a Wembley, no, no more listening to your gals selling Champions League final tickets. It's all about the league. The league, the, the, Europe's done, it's all about the league. That's what that's gonna be their mentality. And you know, we'll find that we'll find that half nine on Saturday. That's when we're gonna find out. We can talk about all our predictions and what we think is gonna happen, but at the end of the day, that's what if the, if these guys want to be you know, prove to prove to the fans that they have got the right mm. mentality. That they're big game players. Well, you got to, you, the best thing that ha, the best thing in football is if you have a demoralising defeat like we had yesterday, you can't wait for the next game. I want them to say, you know what? I can't wait. Is you know, sh, you know, show you know what I'm made of on Saturday. I can't wait. That's got to be their mentality. Tired or not, you are tired. We know that, but you know, give us. You still, if you can give me another twenty percent, just give it. You know, have your rest. Um, you know, at the end of the season, forget England and you know your countries and the Euros. Just give give me give me the last twenty percent of your um ability because you know we've got a chance here. Look, it's a long shot. 
because I I'm one of those people who think you know what when City get in front, you know they they're a, they're a good team and I've looked at City's fixtures and I don't anticipate them losing. But if it, what Egal says is, is that you know they drop points, we've got to be ready to pants. It's no good, you know you know not being out ready to pants if City drop points. We've got to just assume that we could, that come the night of May, our hands are going to be in a trophy. That's got to be the mentality. Stand the manager. Guys. So, I, I, I think the game-by-game game approach is what we need to take. Can we bounce back versus Wolves? Forget about all the other games then. We have to. We ain't got a choice. We ain't got a choice. We ain't got a choice. No, but we, we don't, we do, you, do, you believe, do, you, do you believe that this the issues that we've had over the last couple of games will linger into the Wolves game away? Because the Molly yeah. News, uh, uh, yeah, but I think I think we should still have the quality to, uh, to be able right. to beat Wolves, even with the the, the problems you're talking about. Right. But then but again, you still, hey, you still, Wolves, you Wolves, you still Wolves call beat Man City at home. Not? They beat Tottenham at home. They beat Chelsea at home. They did they get what did they get a result? Did they get a result against Liverpool? They nearly the got, they got, they got a result against United. They scored three against yeah. United at home. They, hey, Wolves ain't shit. Wolves are not a shit team. Like this is not going to be an easy game by any means. It's like Villa. It's not going to be. If an easy we game. lose to Wolves, the season's done then. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I said, there's no point in saying will we, will we come back, bro. Th- there's no choice. It's where, <laughs> it's whether or not. Is is will we? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Th- we ain't got a choice whether or not we want to turn up against Wolves. It's done otherwise. Uh, you know what? I I pretty much touched on every topic that needed to be touched on. Um, party. Let's talk about party. I want to see. I want to know where. What, what the hell? What's going on with party? Why is he not playing? Bro. Well, I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it because the Jorginho lovers are out in full effect here. Yeah, but do they? Like, it's like people forget because this is what annoys me about people. Like, <laughs> they see the new thing, and just because the new thing is doing its job, which is it, which is its job, they just want to mm. completely forget. Oh, Thomas Partey is a better footballer than Jorginho. Jorginho might mm. be playing well, but Thomas Partey's better. We can upgrade. We can do better. We can still have better. Like I think I took the spot and people love for Kyle Saka. If you want me, Miguel, let's, let's not do this narrative. Let's, 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 maybe, let's maybe not do this narrative now. Out. Let's just maybe it's not falling out, but there's something going on. There's nothing going on. Not there's nothing going on. You just you, no, hold no, on. No, 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 no. If, if he's on the bench, there's nothing going on. Hey, Miguel, look at this. There's nothing going on. Miguel, look at this. Miguel, look at this. Look at this. Coming back from injury. That's that's another thing. Is this look look at the the minutes that um Partey has had and the impact that he's made. Partey looks lethargic in his running since he got back. We, we've seen it. He needs a couple more games to be sharp. Partey is better than Jorginho, don't get me wrong. Thomas Partey is, 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 a, is an upgrade on Jorginho. I take him any day. But if you're not, like, it's the same way Bukayo Saka is not in full form. And we know it, but we have nobody to replace him. If he needs more time to play with under-23s, play more games, with that, to get that match sharp fitness. It sounds crazy, but in sports, if you come back from an, a long-term injury and you want to get back in, you don't you don't just hit the floor running. You might you might go back to that injury. So it would be crazy of us to allow Thomas Partey to just come in and we saw the games he played. Let's let's look at it based on performance. He made one or uh, two nice passes like he normally does, but there was a time where he was spun around and the player just left him in the dust. He couldn't catch up. He couldn't catch up, and it's not it's not his fault. It's this is what injuries do. And Thomas Partey is not a spring chicken. He's not twenty one. He's not twenty two. He's not 23. He's not 24. He's not 25, 26, 27, 28. He's 30. In football in age 30, you start getting injured like that. You don't rush them back. Let's be reasonable about how we analyze these things and just throw out this uh, um, narrative that, oh, it's because he doesn't trust him. That's not what it is. You look at a lot of things. His bone is set in place. He's structured for, for his age. A younger player like um, um, uh, Timber, who, who we thought, like, to be honest, Timber's recovery is faster than most people thought because of his young age. Go, 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 sit, go look at people who have had the same injury Timber has had and an, in an older player and look at how long it takes them. So we have to factor in all of these things and look at them reasonably. We can't just build this, this um, uh, narrative about our club and just paint these pictures out there because people are going to take these clips and go out there and say, well, that means there's a problem with party and uh, Arteta. Arteta is not... Let's stop painting our, 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 our gaffer as some demonic person who doesn't like certain players because we don't know what's going on on the inside. Let's just look at it. <laughs> For what it is, Thomas Pat, the same thing. I'll give you a good a good example. Same thing. ESR, the, the minutes we've given ESR, he's looked good in some games, and in other games, he's not looked too good. So you ask yourself the question: Okay, is ESR fully back to what he who he really is? No. So let's let's ease him in. You don't you don't put pressure at that time because that's not when the diamonds are made. 
Okay. That's not when diamonds are made. So please, let's keep him on the bench reasonably. We as we keep it, we might need him in a couple of games. The last two games of the season, that might be when we really, really need Thomas Partey, like to literally show up. To, because if City drops a point, I'm like, okay, now at this point, you've played more games, you've played more minutes, you're looking sharper. We know that these next two, three games, boom, we can lock you in and you can do it. That's it. But to sit yeah. here and just make up these, no, let's not do that to our team, please. Let's not do that. You know what, bro? I wasn't even saying like they're they're beefing or anything. I'm just saying he maybe he doesn't trust them as much as he used to. And that could mean because of the injuries. It could mean many things. But yeah, my wording was wrong. Let's uh I'm gonna wrap it up there, guys. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to touch on that we maybe didn't discuss that you think should we should have discussed before we move we leave? No, we don't we don't try win every game to the end of the season. Yeah, that's, 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 that's all that's what we can do. do. That's all. That's all but you know, you, one right? thing, one thing we didn't speak about. Do you think these players look tired? Because to me, they looked fatigued in that Bayern game. Three, 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 three hundred look tired. Three players look 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 tired. Saliba. Three key players. Saliba, Rice, and um, Saka. I thought the defenders looked uh, gassed. Also, they're making unprecedented mistakes. But hey, uh, maybe I'm I'm looking into it too much. But yeah. That's it for today, guys. I think I th we covered a lot of things. Just to let you guys know some of the things we spoke about. Arsenal's bench doesn't look expiring or confident. But Kyle Saka should be dropped, uh, said, uh, said uh, what do you call it, Dylan misfiring from uh, from Martinelli. Uh, the attack is stuttering and it's hard to trust the process, said uh, my guy Souls. Uh, but Kyle Saka struggling. The bench, uh, Arsenal's bench, uh, woeful April, of course. And is it the tactics, mentality, or players' form? Finally. Does Arteta have, Arteta's future being questioned after some struggles in April once again? Of course, is it the players or is it the manager? That's another thing that we discussed. You guys can let me know in the chat. And obviously, the final two things being, can Arsenal get back on track and still win this Premier League title? And is Thomas Partey going to have a big impact later in the season? Maybe We don't know, but we're going to have to find out. All this plus more on the next show. Hopefully, after a win versus Wolves. We play on Sunday. No, I'm not mistaken. Saturday. 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 Oh yeah, shit. We play Saturday, Tuesday. Seven thirty under the lights. Hey, we we got a bonanza of football. We got a bonanza of football. We got FA Cup semi-finals in the Arsenal. That'd be good. And we got Listen, boxing as well. You like boxing, Miguel? Why do you like boxing? Haney versus Listen, uh versus that's Garcia. Gonna be a, that's gonna be that's gonna be a big fight. That's gonna be a big fight. Oh, I knew be, it. You got like boxing. Hey, it's gonna be a big you, fight. Uh, hey. Mohamed Salah is just, just about to take a penalty. Listen, we might as well stay for that anyway. We're football fans. Let's... Uh, yeah, Liverpool, one, nil, one, nil. Nil. one nil Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Liverpool come back, I'll be shocked. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. You guys have a good one. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Big up uh, big up everyone in the chat. Uh, guys, let's try to be nice to each other. I know I know some of you guys might not like uh, might not like Lee Gunner, but he's cool. Let him let him let him have his opinions and say what he wants to say in the chat. Let's be respectful in the chat. Any anybody going after Lee, you're coming. I will find you and I'll appear in your dreams. Leave Lee alone. Free yeah. Lee. Even, Free even Lee. if you don't agree, Free Lee. even if you don't agree, Free even Lee. if you don't agree, everyone should should have the right to have their opinions and and, and challenge their Always. opinion, not the person. That's not how the world yeah. works, you go, unfortunately. The world won't, the world don't yeah. work like that. Freedom of speech until you your you opinion is, is different to the masses. Yeah. You go. That's how, that's how freedom of speech works. Game, that's not how it works. When am I coming to a home game? Yeah, when's your next game? Bro, I tried to go to the Bayern game. I didn't... I fucking Wolves, mate. Team Wolves, mate. Come on. That's not Team Wolves. You got We're the Wolves right there. Yes, bro. Wolves, Saturday, 7.30, kick off. Listen, bro, with the little kid and everything right now, I don't know when the next game I'm going to be yeah, able to go. Yeah, I, I, was, I, I, was in I, London, I was in London all week last week. I tried to go to a game. I couldn't get it. It is yeah. what it is. Hey, you know what I mean? I you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Up to £160. Yeah. It's, don't, but don't pay that money for you. Tickets cost £26, the way games. Bro, don't do it. they offered uh, the, the well, Bayern Munich well, tickets, well, the Bayern Munich tickets, the cheapest ticket I could find was £375. No, nah, don't do it. Don't pounds. do it. You got family, man. But yo, souls, today you've been quiet, man. I could tell your your souls is ready to explode if we drop points again. Guys, we can't afford to drop points. Hopefully, we win. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. I'm out of here, people. Love for the love, love for watching. And if you're watched up until this point of the video, let me know what your favorite color is in the chat. I'm out. Great, great, great. What? For a color? I need to know.
you yeah. see, you, you, you see, uh, the way if Arsenal drop points, just watch the total meltdown that is oh, about right. to happen. I deserve it. Honestly, meltdown. It would be I'm deserved. not gonna lie. No, no, hold on, hold on, quickly, yeah, quickly, yeah, quickly. Watch, yeah, quickly. If you support total... this team every week, yeah, you spend your money traveling, watching these lot, ho- mm-hmm. and they do this at the end of the 38 game season, you have every right to have a meltdown. Facts. Stop it. I'm not. I'm not... Get some help. I am not saying that you don't have a right. I'm not talking about the right. I'm just saying just... Sorry? Just watch it. I'm just saying just watch the meltdown. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. We're going to wrap it no. up here, guys. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. And remember, if, if we drop points... Stop it. Please, bro. Get some help. Get some help. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>